I want to begin my remarks by giving a little bit of background to the Center for Ukrainian-Canadian Studies at the University of Manitoba to put into perspective um, the road that has gone through in the last 35 years, but at the same time to reflect also on some of the questions that were sent out by YARS um, and to um, maybe complement some of the things that have been said and perhaps add to some of the previous speakers. The uh, Center for Ukrainian Canadian Studies is sort of housed out of St. Andrews College. So St. Andrews College and the Center sort of share um, a very common background. 1946, North End Winnipeg, the uh, Faculty of Theology for the St. Andrews College was established. And in that program, uh, not often do we think of it in such ways, there was a component known as Ukrainian Studies. And in fact, some of the scholars that had come over in the immigrant experience after World War II, like Doroshenko, um, Mulek Lutsek, uh, Ivan Ohienko, Metropolitan Larion, taught. So um, the very beginning of 1946, Ukrainian studies were included uh, within the context of this uh, small college in North End, Winnipeg. An, an interesting thing happened, and of course, um, in Winnipeg, we had sort of the mobilization through the university of having all the church-related colleges moved to the University of Manitoba campus. They started, the wave started in 1959-60, the Anglican College, the Roman Catholic College. But in 1964, St. Andrews College moved to the campus of the University of Manitoba, built a remarkable building with uh, tremendous support from the community. But one of the problems that they had is that they didn't have any arts or science component. They moved, basically, the program um, of theology with its limited sort of Ukrainian studies program to a university that had already an established Slavic studies program for 15 years. Um, and so as a result, Ukrainian studies was uh, part and parcel of the university setting. So how does the university move in this direction to establish formal arts and science or arts courses or specialization as such? And so as a result, um, in the agreements with the university and the college, uh, the college initially was only uh, acknowledged as an uh, associate college with the idea that within a short period of time, within a decade, it should move into what we would call uh, an affiliate, a fully affiliated college with an arts program of one kind or another. This process initially began in 1972-73. After eight years of being on campus, the very first arts courses in, uh, in, in Ukrainian studies um, were initiated in 72-73. And as such, St. Andrews College became an approved uh, uh, center, teaching center of the University of Manitoba, with that idea that in time it would produce or move in the direction of having a, a formal status within uh, Ukrainian studies. Over eight years, some 21 courses in a multiplicity of, um, of uh, um, areas of study from history to political science to religion, uh, Ukrainian studies within um, the German and Slavic studies, economics, geography, fine art. Courses were initiated, formally approved, and formally taught mostly by sessionals. And as such, uh, these 21 courses would begin to be envisioned as sort of the beginning of some sort of a center for the University of Manitoba and St. Andrews College. An affiliation committee was struck, and this affiliation committee worked over five years to put together some sort of direction for this, you know, group of courses that were available, and in this group of courses, uh, some one-third of the courses were on topics of Ukrainian Canadiana. And so when the final results were accepted by the Senate and then the Board of Governors by the University of Manitoba in 1981 of January, the Center for Ukrainian Canadian Studies was finally established. So within the short period of time, the college affiliated with the university became an affiliate college of the university and it became a center for Ukrainian Canadian Studies under its first director, Dr. Natalia Aponyuk. The center was responsible for the VP academic at the University of Manitoba, and it was run through what we would call a policy council that had sort of equal representation between university, St. Andrews College members, as well as uh, community members. 
And over the next decade, the need for endowments, the need for fundraising, some $1 million was raised, especially because the university provided sort of seed money to pay for the stipends of the sessionals, to pay for um, the um, salary of the director. It was a 0.5 salary, 0.5 director position, and to, uh, to uh, pay for the running of the center. St. Andrews College picked up by providing the housing and providing all the physical plant and facilities for, for the institution. Now, the center initially um, established a mission statement, and the center's mission statement reads uh, as, as follows. The center exists to create, preserve, and communicate knowledge relating to the Ukrainian Canadians through teaching, through research, and outreach. So this becomes sort of the, the has law as such for the center. And so as a result, in all three areas, teaching, research, and outreach, it began initially to work uh, at a pace that would uh, respond to the finances coming in within a short period of time, um, within the first decade, some $1.8 million was raised uh, for the center as such. In teaching, the center has taught eight to 10 courses on an annual basis of that cohort of 21. The cohort has also made some changes over the years, added new courses and subtracted others. It includes a major and a minor Ukrainian-Canadian heritage studies. Um, the possibility of an MA or PhD um, was only allowed at an interdisciplinary level. Only one student has taken that. That's Alexander Pavlovsky, who did a PhD in Ukrainian-Canadian literature. The staff was always sessional, so we have been very rich in Winnipeg with sessional staff to be able to teach the courses. We also have some staff in the Faculty of Theology that could help out with some of the courses in Religious Studies at the university. Um, some University of Manitoba staff worked on overload to be able to teach courses. Um, basically, the important work done has been at very much at the undergraduate level. The emphasis on graduate studies, um, since there are no full-time um, staff, um, this was, was never pushed, this never became part and parcel of the, uh, uh, the Center for Ukrainian-Canadian Studies. In research, the center also, although limited by its funds and limited by the staffing, did some, what I would say, experimental work. For example, um, in Ukrainian-Canadian history, Oris Martinovich was appointed over four years to work as, at a 0.5 level as a research fellow. We've had the work done by Bob Klemash in Ukrainian-Canadian folklore over the past eight years. Uh, his research, he produced um, a series of uh, Ukrainian-Canadian papers, Winnipeg papers. Occasional papers, the Center has published some nine papers over the last uh, 20 years. Two books were published uh, um, as such, one on Anthony Hlenka, and the other one was the um, PhD thesis of Bob Klemash. But the center has worked very collaboratively with many of the Manitoba institutions, German and Slavic Studies, Osaradok, Uvan, St. Andrews College. We have an archive of the Ukrainian-Canadian experience that has been running for the last decade. Um, we've done approximately nine symposium conferences. And on several occasions, we've also partnered with Yars Balan and the Ukrainian Studies, Ukrainian-Canadian Studies Center as program at the University of Alberta. The last conference was done on Ukrainians during World War II. Um, the center is also, because of the staff that have traveled to Ukraine, worked um, very, very closely with some of the diaspora centers in Ukraine and um, have been very, very successful in helping to promote Ukrainian studies. Uh, we saw in uh, some of the um, slides uh, previously some of the work that has been accomplished in Ukraine. And, and we've been following this very, very closely because of the interest of, of the staff. We've also participated very actively in the learned societies. Um, there's always a participation in the various sessions on Ukrainian-Canadian studies. Uh, and so as a result, this has become sort of a meeting place, a place where we can compare notes with other scholars working in uh, Ukrainian-Canadian studies. We're very fortunate at uh, the Center of Ukrainian-Canadian Studies to receive a number of years ago the Tarnavetsky Distinguished Lecture Series 
where we support uh, Ukrainian Canadian scholars, invite them on a biannual basis to, to speak at this uh, preeminent um, event in the life of the Centre. The work of the Centre in outreach has basically been limited mostly to the province of Manitoba and to the city of Winnipeg. Um, community lectures, travel tours, um, we have a large component of major towns that we can do these travel tours. Um, we've worked very collaboratively with Los Aradoc. We work with the Ukrainian Canadian Committee, the Manitoba Provincial Council. Um, many of the themes on Ukrainian internment, Holodomor, et cetera, et cetera, have been um, things that we've supported and we've given some professional assistance and academic assistance to it, okay? Um, one of the interesting things at the beginning of the Manitoba bilingual program, which is modeled here in the Alberta program, we initiated through the federal government on a special grant to, for two years to train 42 Ukrainian language teacher assistants. There was a need uh, that the teachers in the province of uh, Manitoba wanted and needed teaching assistants that would be not just people taken off the street, but would have some background in Ukrainian, Ukrainian-Canadian studies. And so uh, this... Um, Basically, summer training was uh, something that Dr. Panuk placed a lot of emphasis on and did for, uh, for the two summers of 1983-1984. We've also supported um, many of the local institutions in our province and our city, media interviews, newspaper, radio, television, a lot of commentary and tremendous support has been given to the Ukrainian bilingual program and our Saturday morning schools. So that's a little bit of background on the Center for Ukrainian Canadian Studies of the University of Manitoba. What are some of the ideas and some of the needs and some of the wishes uh, we have? First of all, I want to say we would like to suggest that we would like to improve the sharing between Ukrainian Canadian studies across Canada. Maybe we could set up some sort of an informal council or some sort of a, um, a, a board that would look into and provide direction and become sort of the clearinghouse uh, based on, you know, respecting the individuality of every institution, but yet at the same time uh, working together. Number two, um, we would like to see uh, more intensely um, relationships with Canadian studies. Ukrainian-Canadian studies, we cannot be separated from Canadian studies um, at many, many of our major universities. I think this is very, very important that we um, develop relationships through our history departments, through the departments that handle uh, Canadian studies. We know that there's also immigration studies and ethnic studies and diaspora studies. We should be involved in a little bit more of a cross-section with the various uh, study groups that exist uh, in our universities. Number three, um, I'd like to support some of my previous colleagues who talked about the need for online courses, new Im Im import into technology and use of technology in spreading the good word about uh, Ukrainian-Canadian studies. Number four, I think we should be doing um, a better job of assisting students, especially summer projects and government jobs, et cetera, that can be made available where they could go out and do the study work and do the research work on uh, Ukrainian Canadians. In Manitoba, Dr. Stella Hedenyuk and myself have worked with a church architecture project in the province of Manitoba. This past summer, for example, we employed four students that worked through Manitoba, and we're very, very happy to say that we sort of share this with the Sanctuary Project, which is based out of the University of Alberta, that is doing similar work uh, in the province of Alberta and Saskatchewan. You know, the whole idea of photography, of interviews, historical research, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think we could do a little bit more in this work to, to show students that there are some potentials as far as um, their, um, you know, summer jobs and summer careers are concerned. Another area of cooperation I think that is really, really strongly needed is our university archival centers. We are very, very lucky at a university that we've established an archival center, the, and within that center we have a section on the Ukrainian-Canadian experience. Many of our local museums and archival centers right now have a problem with professionalizing the archivist positions, uh, or there's lack of money. We believe that through the universities that this should be a priority, and it is a priority, and we should professionalize and make sure that our archives and are in places where there are professional archivists. And last but not least, I'd like to just say that within Ukrainian studies, 
I'd like to also uh, support um, um, Professor McCook on urban history. We need to do much more. But I'd also like to put in a pitch in religious history. We need to do a little bit more work on that formal history of our religious tradition. But at the same time, there's a lot of interesting things. Like, what is the belief system of the average member of our parish? What is the situation with the Protestant churches? Um, there was a period when they were sort of declining. In Winnipeg, we've got two new Protestant churches that have come up in the last couple of years. So we'd like to suggest that uh, these are two areas that could potentially be growth areas as far as Ukrainian-Canadian studies. Thank you.